And welcome to tonight's episode of Winner and the Mailman. Tonight, we bring in one of the greatest athletic trainers I've ever known. And that is Doug Jones. Uh, actually, this month, the month of, month of March, is Athletic Trainer Month. So, we found it, uh, found it perfect to bring in Doug Jones. He is the athletic trainer for Western Nebraska Community College. Just got back from the national tournament with the with the girls basketball team and yeah. uh, heck of he, heck of a road trip, huh? It was uh, it was a long what, ten days, nine nights. <laughs> uh, the weather was crazy, you know. Uh, coming back through uh, North Texas, there through Oklahoma, got snow, all sorts of crazy weather through Southern Colorado there. But yeah, we finally made it back. So well, it's kind of like. Uh, Kind of like Nebraska down there, isn't it? It's, it's a little bit uh, more humid, maybe. It wasn't even humid. It was uh, uh, the wind was about the same. There's just a lot more dirt down there. <laughs> so, hello, <laughs> well, it is a big state. They yeah. got a lot of dirt. Yeah. But what was the experience like at state? Obviously, you being able to be there with them. It was a. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was a really interesting uh, time to be down there, just because uh, you know the girls ranked fourth, as high as fourth all, all season long, and then. Uh, Getting down there and seeing teams, you know, we, we went in with a 12 seed. Sorry, they went in with a 12 seed. I didn't, I didn't play, obviously. You were now, still did there. that 12 seed come down just because of that EWC loss? It may have. I, there's, I don't know yeah. if we'll ever know. It's like, you know, the, the, the brackets are released from the committees and things like that. You're ranked we'll fourth most of the season, then all of a sudden you, had, you take a loss, and then next thing you know you're a 12 hey, seed. Hey, if we talk about it, tournament. Tyler was seven, 17 seed, beat yeah. out the 3 seed for the championship. Yeah. Well, so. and, you know, and Tyler, they, they, you know, they, they kind of crushed it. Yeah, uh, kind of crushed them. So I still think the Cougars are the best team in the nation. So <laughs> little plug there. Um, <laughs> no, it, it was it was a great experience. I mean, Tyler was a very uh, tall, physical team, and uh, you know they our girls played their best, and they just uh, came up on the short end. So you know, unfortunately, that was the way it was. But uh, what first Final Four since two thousand three? Three, yeah. yeah. Three. So nineteen uh, years. It was uh, it was a it was a good time. Well, Doug, I've known Doug a long time. We grew up in the same town, graduated from the same high school. And, uh, Doug, you went to Creighton University for yes, your sir. athletic trainer certificate or yep. whatever you want to call it. How long have you been with the Cougars? Uh, this is year 15. With it. So wow. I just actually celebrated back in February was my 20th uh, year of being certified as an athletic trainer. And 15 of those years with the Cougars. So, so, so this is your first time at the state tournament with them. Then. I, I, the, 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 actually, I've been nationals. I've been to nationals, nationals with <laughs> I've been to nationals with volleyball the several volleyball. times. I, my brain is still um, on like high school, so I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I've been I, volleyball nationals several times. I've been with women's basketball team. The last time I was with them was in 2017 back in Lubbock. Um, I've been to softball nationals before, but both in Florida and Utah. Um, now it's down. I believe it's in Arizona now. Oh, that would be um, nice. So, uh, That's hot. yeah, but uh, I, you know, I've I've had the chance to go with them to different things. So it's been, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, well, so Doug, going back to your college years at Creighton, um, you know what what brought you into to doing the athletic training bit? I know that you worked with the baseball team and stuff a lot yep. when you were at Creighton, but what 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 drove you into athletic training? So. When and, and actually, it's a funny story because if you go back to uh, the summer before I went to college, my freshman year, you know, I got a catalog in the mail. These are the classes we offer. And this is what you can take. And there was one that was called Introduction to Athletic Training. And I read it, and it's about taping ankles and stuff like that. And I, you know, always been a sports guy, I like sports. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this seems really cool. And so I talked to my advisor when I got to school, and they were like, hey, listen, this is a class that's specifically meant for people who are going into this. You might be able to take it later when you're older. Just, you know, let's wait and see. And I said, okay. So I had originally signed up for a calculus class. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7.30 in the morning. And we walked in the very first day of calculus class. And my roommate sat next to me and the teacher starts writing these equations on the board. And my roommate's writing furiously and I'm just staring at it like a monkey doing a math problem. <laughs> And I have no idea what's going on. And I looked at him and I said, what are we doing? He says, just hold on. I can. And I walked out of there, walked straight to the registrar's office, dropped the class. Okay. And I said, what else can I take? And I said, is this class open? And it was that it was at the time EXS 195, which was exercise science, mm -hmm. introduction to athletic training. And they said, yeah, there's an open spot. So I switched classes basically Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 7.30. Wednesday morning, I walked into class, and the instructor says, why are you in my class? 
And I kind of, mm, oh, well, and I look around and I see athletes that I've seen, you know, soccer players and, and a couple baseball players and a couple other kids that I've seen around campus. And I'm like, um, I just signed up for it. And he's like, okay, you can stay. But, um, you know, just know that this class is designed for people who are going into athletic training. And so, you know, as the, you know, I took the class, had a lot of fun, enjoyed it. And at the end of the semester, um, you know, through some other injuries and stuff like that, I spent some time in the training room and I finally just was like, hey, listen, I think this is something I want to do. And he's like, okay, great, we'll start you. And I said, okay. And I just kind of started doing some observation hours. And then at the end of my freshman year, you know, uh, the instructor, Steve Brace, who's a mentor of mine, been for a long time, was just like, all right, we start August. I think it was like August 6th. Be back. Let's be ready to go. And I just kind of jumped in and just kind of took over from there. That is, uh, you know, and, and as long as I've known you, Doug, I've never heard that story. Well, it's it's been one of those things where, um, you know, I I was really nervous about it at first when I was trying to get into it. But I'd seen what the athletic trainers do and I'd yeah. seen some of them work and I was like, hey, this is really good. Uh, it also helps that, you know, I wanted to be a physical therapist, but I got my grades back my first year <laughs> and chemistry was not a friend of mine. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I, you know, I don't know if I can get in with these grades. Mm -hmm. And this was a way for me to work with active populations and things like that. Um, and so I just, I, I kind of just jumped in and, and went full bore and just absolutely, you know, my first assignment was baseball. Mm -hmm. And these are guys that I had... Um, you know, hung out with, I had been friends with, and it was just like, oh, you're the trainer now. Okay, cool. I'm like, oh, I'm just a student, but okay. And then I got to work with, you know, baseball, basketball, soccer, uh, golf, um, the rowing team, the women's crew team, um, tennis, which I, you know, I, I have nothing against tennis. It's just not my type of thing. Um, but it's kind I, of an acquired taste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I got the chance to work with some some great high level athletes. So, uh, especially at Creighton. Yeah, in great school. Um, uh, so, with it being the trainer month, um, mm -hmm. so has any of the teams done anything for you? I've gotten actually our volleyball team. Um, our former, I guess, former assistant now, Brooke Kava. Yeah. She. Um, Talk to the girls, they all wrote me little thank you notes, like, you know, thank you for everything you've done for us, that sort of thing. It was really nice. Um, you know, softball always sends me um, just messages, thank you for doing everything you do. Um, and, and that's, you know, really, like, I've had a few of the students just here and there, like, hey, happy National Athletic Training Month. I'm like, oh, okay, thanks, yeah. Um, I just, I, I really want to get it out, you know, kind of like what we do as athletic trainers Absolutely. and try to, um, especially here in the western part of Nebraska, um, because we kind of don't always get, I, and we're not always looking for recognition, but just knowing that we are there as a safety net for some of our student athletes. Well, I, I know myself, not being an athlete, not being in, at the college or anything, I don't know how many times I've texted you or called you and said, hey, I got this going on, what, what do you think? And you've always been there to help me. You know, the thing is, is I've been around the college quite a bit with, you know, around the teams and, and you know, with, with the Star Herald and everything. And I've been in Doug's office. I've been around Doug's office. And you are constantly busy. I mean, there is always something going on in the athletic trainer's office. Whether there's somebody on the table or somebody after games, you see all these, these, these athletes with, with knee braces and these ice and everything else. Doug is constantly working. Not only are you working with these athletes after games and during, I mean, you're working during the games mm -hmm. as kind of an assistant coach. I mean, you're, you're at the end of the bench on for a lot of teams, and I know a lot of the students use you for whatever reason it is. You're kind of a jack of all trades. Well, and, and I, I actually appreciate that because I, there are a lot of things that I do um, you know, I always I teach a class called prevention and care, which is kind of the introduction to prevention teaching. class. Yeah, and one of the things that I, we talk about in the very first chapter is what does an athletic trainer do? Because a lot of people get confused. I I've, I've been to Walmart before, and I've had people like, "Hey, I know you. You're you're the guy that gets the water for the basketball team." <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't gonna yeah, bring that up. No, like, I let no, you do that no, one. You know, yes, I'm the H two O distribution engineer. I am the water boy. Yes, I have two degrees that say I'm the water boy. Um, <laughs> 
But it's been, you know, like, hey, you're the guy that does this and this. And like, yes, I am. But there's more that goes on behind those doors yes. where, you know, in the locker room or in the training room itself, um, where a lot of people don't see. It's Grand Central um, Station. I'm not even and, kidding. And it, it is, you know, we've ever since COVID hit, we've been a little bit different. We've had some, uh, we have a scheduling system now, so I, and I'm not overloaded all the mm -hmm. time. Um, but it is, it's, it's quite busy and the stuff that goes on behind the doors, uh, behind the scenes that people don't see the, you know, we're charged with prevention, evaluation, care, recognition, diagnosis of musculoskeletal injuries, uh, medical conditions, acute, chronic, both, um, kind of like a first responder. I mean, mm -hmm. we're not classified as a first responder, but we get to do a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, obviously CPR, AED trained. Sure. Um, I'm an actual instructor now as well for that um, because it's just knowing that what to do and what to see and what to look for in certain athletes when something happens. Um, and a lot of times people see me at games, especially it seems like basketball games or volleyball games, spring sure. action when someone goes down. And usually the very first thing we do is get them calmed down and then get them off the court back in the room where we're not doing everything in front of everybody. Uh, you know, mostly for privacy type of things, but it's just, um, you know, the stuff that happens behind the scenes is really the stuff that people don't see. And you mentioned something that I don't think a lot of people understand. It's kind of the bedside manner type of thing. You get them calmed down. I mean, one of the things that you have to do, because as an athlete, and Brandon, you were, you were, you were an athlete. You've probably seen the, seen the trainer quite a bit. How calming was that to know that the trainer was there to help you in in any situation? You're shaking your head like, no, I've never had that happen. I've never had one. <laughs> you never had an athletic trainer? No, training. we had a parent who was a like a trauma nurse, though. Yeah. So that was the closest we got. Well, now, and the thing is, is when Doug and I were growing up in high school, it, there was usually like a doctor or somebody that was around. It was like a parent or something. Now, everywhere you go, I mean, I cover a lot of different football, basketball, and there's trainers. Um, we've got, you know, we've got, I don't know how many around here. Uh, not as many as we'd like. Not as many as we'd like. I know that they're spread extremely thin when it comes to that. But I know, I know that there's ones that cover, you know, some will cover Scott's both and Gearing. There's one I know, Mitchell, mm -hmm. um, uh, Stewart and Baird. I mean, there's, there's athletic trainers around. But I think that that is something great to see now because, like I said, when you and I were growing up, there wasn't always somebody there if you went down. I, you know, when I was in high school, um, and I wish I could tell you his last name, Pete was the athletic trainer, worked for the hospital. He came over every so often. In fact, he helped me when in high school when I had a football was injury. It, was it Dr. Johnson? No, no, no. It was, it was, I, we just called him Pete the trainer. And I, I <laughs> honestly, I wish I could tell you what his name was. See, um, I never, I, we never had yeah. an athletic trainer. And, you know, we had, you know, Mr. Yanni was about as close as we came to an athletic trainer. <laughs> I've had that ankle tape a few yeah. times. <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and God rest his soul, Coach Gilland, you know, taped yeah. a couple times, you know, too. But um, it was, it was just different to see this and, uh, you know, growing up without one and now seeing what we could have done or what could have been different. Absolutely. Had, had we had somebody. Um, you know, we, I don't think we ever really had anything seriously happen, um, you know, during a game or anything like that. And I think we were probably pretty lucky for that. Um, I know that there were some, some bad injuries, uh, you know, closer to your age, like Toby Hutchison, yeah, um, yeah. some stuff like that. And we always had the EMTs for the fire department guys. The fire department guys were always there. Exactly. Um, you know, and I've covered a couple of games for Gearing High School this year. And that yeah. was that one of my joys is going over and actually talking to the EMTs, the paramedics mm -hmm. while they're there. Um, just like, hey guys, I'm here, just in case you know something happens, sure. I'll wave you on. Um, another Mitchell grad, DJ Glenn, mm -hmm. uh, working over there. He's, you know, oh, hey, Doug, it's nice to see you. And it, it's just kind of, you know, I love the small town community aspect of this. So Well, everybody does J Doug Jones. I mean, just everybody does. And, and, and to add something to Doug's H2O distribution, you've also, like, put together the music lists for like the the games before yeah. the game yeah. you put he's put together the music list you've done announcing you've done PA announcing you I mean if if Ryan Bergner needs something and Doug Jones is available I'm here's the thing is I, I I really want 
all of our students, whether it's the student athletes or not, I want our students at the college to have a good experience here. Sure. Absolutely. And so, like, I, I know that a lot of times it's, it's jumping in and helping with athletic stuff. But if there's something that needs to be done on campus, I'm going to do it. Um, I, I have the privilege of meeting with a lot of our recruits when they come on campus. One of our admissions counselors, uh, actually admissions director, um, she kind of sets it up so if they're coming on campus to talk to a coach about playing, they get to come meet me. And I get to talk to them about how, you know, we, it's student athlete, not athletic student. We put academics, you know, as Absolutely. a high priority. Um, you know, I talk to them about what you know, to expect from me. I get to talk to their parents about like our insurance policies and practices that we follow. And I always tell the parents, you know, I've got two stepdaughters who one's in college now and she's in Lincoln and she's, you know, away from us. And I, I always tell the parents, I really hope that I can be that person that looks after your kid if something happens. Sure. Someone you know that you can trust if someone's there. And so I always do like to be involved in that stuff. And, and I do get a kick, you know, my mom's a music teacher, so I get a, a kick out of picking Hi, music. <laughs> um, um, and I get a, you know, the, the PA announcing, I, I, I don't know where that came from. All of a sudden one day we were at baseball and it was just quiet and there was nothing happening. And I said, hey coach, can I go announce? And he's like, yeah, sure, give it a shot. <laughs> and so I, you know, I had kind of watched some of their announcers and stuff and I just grabbed the microphone and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Cleveland Field. He's great. And he's one of the best. I'm I just, I, I picked it up and I just, I absolutely loved it. And I had yeah. people come up, you know, like, that's not your normal voice. And I'm like, no, that's my, <laughs> my announcer's a, voice. You gotta have a radio yeah. voice. And, um, you know, listen to, like, Jared Horrock for a long time, Matt Williams, uh, getting to listen to him and, and some and of the... You did the national things. tournament for us. I did the national when tournament. I was in radio, he actually broadcast the um, national tournament. Which was on. actually very difficult because I was doing it through an earpiece on a flip phone. On a flip phone. On a flip phone. Yeah, <laughs> on a, a flip phone. Yes. Uh, on a flip phone. <laughs> I and remember. I, I had to hang up at one point because we had someone who got injured. And then I was trying to call back to the station. And I kept getting a busy tone and oh, you know, finally jump back into it. And I'm like, uh, we're back here. And I, I think it's the sixth inning now. Um, I don't even know who this is up to bat. And, I, and I, I can't imagine it was the best experience for the listeners of Western Nebraska. But uh, I, I had a ball listening to it. it, it you know, I, I, it was really hard just to try to feel... You know, I've, I've listened to like Vin Scully oh, yeah. for years, Dodgers. and, you know, he was able to do by himself and just tell stories and fill dead time. I was trying to fill dead time, and I had no idea what to talk about, not listening enough, you know, so mm -hmm. I was just, it was practice, and it kind of came with it, so. Dude, I had Skip Carey and, and uh, those guys for the Braves on TV. Don Sutton, yeah. yeah. Don Sutton. Yeah. So, and, you know, Brianna, you, you've never had an athletic trainer before? You can't even remember. I'm Los Angeles. Like I was in a smaller school. We well, I would have thought that no. that would be the place that you guys would have no, a lot of them. No, we had a parent that was a trauma nurse, and that was pretty much it. Well, otherwise, Tiger Bomb. <laughs> tiger, tiger Bomb. I got my family got introduced to that. The Bio Freeze. Bio Freeze. Bio tiger yeah. Bomb. Icy Hot. Flex All. My family all that got kind of introduced stuff. to Tiger Bomb through a teacher. So. Um, yeah. I guess my last question is your most memorable moment as an athletic trainer. Oh, I. You know, I. I think. I, I've been able, I've been fortunate enough to have worked when I was in college, especially. Um, you know, I, I got the chance to offer to volunteer with a few different things. Like there was a time a couple of NBA teams came, came to Omaha, and I got to go work with them. I got to go uh, work and help out at uh, a professional wrestling event. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, which was really cool. Uh, I got to take one of them to the doctor because he'd gotten hurt the night before. Uh, took him to the hospital so he'd get an MRI. Nicest guy I've ever met. Oh, yeah, most of them I think are. Yeah, you know, his in ring persona is just big bad guy, you know, and, and he was the you know, nicest guy when he got in my vehicle to take him to the doctor. But I, I really think that my, my best moments are those ones where the kid who comes in who can't walk or is, is hurting so bad that, you know, they just want to quit, they want to walk away. And then at the end of the day, when they are feeling better, they go out on the field, on the court, whatever, and they turn around and say, hey, thank you. This is what, you know, you helped me get here. So I think that's that's the biggest thing. You know, that's that's my most proud achievement is to see those kids that haven't been able to throw, to walk, to run, jump, you know, had to have surgery, whatever, for, to see them go back on the court. For me, that's my best moment. So...
that's such a heck of a story. And like I said, I've known Doug a long time, and he is genuine. Uh, definitely one of the best athletic trainers out there for the college. And I know you guys are all, you guys all kind of keep in touch with each other. You're all kind of friends. I know you pick up things uh, around the way. But right now, March, Athletic Trainer Month, if you are in a school or an institution that has an athletic trainer in it, please make sure that you let them know they're appreciated and that, you know, what they do for not only the student athletes, but the school itself. Um, guys like Doug, you know, they're, they're few and far between. So, you know, we appreciate Doug. We appreciate you coming in tonight. Uh, and, thank you very much. And, uh, you know, what's what's next on the docket for the, the athletic trainer? We've um, got some softball coming up this weekend. We've got some weekend. softball coming up this weekend. And, you know, we've got baseball and softball games coming up throughout mm -hmm. the, the remainder of March through April. Um, yeah, just looking forward to these teams actually competing at home for a while. So come out, come out to the softball game because I guarantee you, Doug will be raking the circle. I I will be raking <laughs> at some point. I can guarantee you, I my butt will be on a crate at the end of the dugout. Just that's my lucky spot. I I've been told that's where I have well, to stay. And I once again, Doug, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for uh, coming in and 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 talking to our our winner of the mailman fans out there and like I said uh, appreciate your athletic trainers if you're an institution that has one and if you see one on the street if you see Doug Jones on the street tell him how much you appreciate him. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I, you know I, I, I appreciate you guys bringing me in here um, this is something every year I want to try to do I mean I know several years ago we had Randy Meininger when he was the mayor of Scotts sure. Bluff sign a proclamation making it National Athletic Training Month in Scotts Bluff um, and we haven't done something like that for a couple of years now, but you know we're going through a lot in the state of Nebraska right now. I think it was 2012 we had LB 260, which was the Concussion Awareness Act, sure. which we made sure that you know concussions are seen, especially in high school kids, by a licensed healthcare professional, whether that be a doctor, um, a neurologist, an athletic trainer, things like that. And now we're undergoing um, our state practice act, uh, LB 436, this year. Uh, just went through general file and through um, the first read, basically, um, which is going to expand our practice act a little sure. bit. So we can still work under a physician, but we can actually be seen, have referrals sent to us uh, if we work in clinics and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, I don't know if he'll ever see this, but Senator Stinner, thank you so much for supporting us. You've always been a, a supporter of, you know, Western Nebraska and that sort of thing. but. I've been able to talk with him on the phone a couple times. I've John's seen him. Yeah. yeah, and he's, you know, like, hey, what can I do to help you? And he's always been helpful listening to that. So, um, but yeah, we're just kind of waiting for that to go through. And once that goes through, I, you'll even see athletic trainers doing more stuff. So that's awesome. That That's just, I mean, like I said, I've been, I've been around Doug. I've been around athletic trainers at, you know, for the Star Herald, for whatever. And you know, and a lot of a lot of times, you guys are just faces in the crowd from people who don't really know you th that you're there. Um, like you said, you, you meet people in Walmart and stuff like that. But for us who know what they do and have seen the behind the scenes stuff that they deal with, I, I tell you what, man, you, you guys are you guys are a godsend. Thank you for what you do. Well, thank you, I appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for joining us once again. Thanks for coming. Hey, for having me. I mean, so. <laughs> Uh, for more sports coverage, you can go to StarHerald.com or you can pick up a print edition anywhere you can find them. And we will see you all next week.